and peaceful festive period and today I wanted to do uh, I guess it's going to be a reading vlog of sorts it's just going to be over the course of today and maybe tomorrow um, it's currently the 28th of December and I am working today working from home though um, and I have the house to myself because my partner and my little boy have gone to see some family members in Newcastle um, so I've wrapped myself in my four-year-old's blanket um, because I miss him and I wish I was spending the festive period with them instead of being at home working but never mind um, in this vlog I just wanted to get prepared for the year ahead I think I really love this time of year um, this period between Christmas and New Year even though I'm working this year I just really love it and I feel really inspired and like not necessarily that I want to start fresh but I just I feel like I have this sort of burst of renewed inspiration for what I want to to do with the year ahead um I don't really set goals I think I am in this vlog gonna set some goals um although they're not like sort of big important goals they're gonna be more like silly things that are just more things that I would like to to do rather than to achieve um just in terms of like making more time for my hobbies and and things like that rather than just setting myself like big milestones in 2023 I graduated from my master's and started work again after a three-year break um so I took three years off work when um basically because of covid I lost my job in travel um and decided that I would become a full-time carer to my son who is disabled and that was a very challenging rewarding and sometimes happy period of my life I feel like I can look back on it with fondness um but yeah it was very difficult and um it's been a difficult transition to go back to work and um, working full time is different um but I'm really enjoying it and I feel optimistic about the future which is something that as a carer I often felt like my life had kind of stagnated a bit I think I lost a bit of a sense of purpose and I hate to say that I don't ever want my purpose in life to come from my job um and it's not I don't think it's the job itself giving me purpose it's just getting up in the morning and going somewhere um with intention instead of like my mornings before were very chaotic for like getting my son ready for school and like tidying the house up and my mornings now are chaotic for a different reason and I'm just enjoying yeah getting out of the house more um I have more of an excuse to go for walks and things um just because I'm in Edinburgh for four out of five days a week and yeah it's just it's nice to to have something else to do with my time and weirdly I feel like I'm finding more time for my hobbies now that I've started work um and I find that I have a better work-life balance now that I'm out of the house for the majority of my time so yeah it's been a really difficult year in terms of just transitioning and um like really big life events I'm hoping that 2024 will be a little bit quieter I don't have anything huge that I would like to achieve like I said but um I do have some things that I want to just do as like a fun silly thing I suppose and I'll maybe talk through those goals um later on in the video and um, once I've sort of finalized them in my head um and yeah this video is just going to be me sort of resetting for January um finishing up the books that I've got on the go I've got three on the go at the moment and they are beyond the wall um reach for the stars and a little bit of and then there were none by Agatha Christie um I will finish all of them I'm sure by the 1st of January um oh, this light is so annoying it's it was so dark like two minutes ago and now it's so bright I can barely even look out the window um 
what was I even talking about? Um, oh yeah, the books I've got on the go. Um, so yeah, I'll talk a bit more about those. I'm just doing some cosy things with my time. Um, taking down the Christmas decorations and sort of getting the house sort of refreshed for, like I said, a new year. Um, I'm going on holiday on the 1st of January. <laughs> um, we're going to Amsterdam for a few days, which will be nice. Um, so I want to get like all my Christmas decorations down before then and just make sure that my house is looking stick and span for when I come back and yeah just I'm, I'm excited about the next week or so um but yeah like I said this is going to be a vlog maybe a day or two of just me finishing off the books I'm reading pottering around the house doing some cozy things um in between getting my actual work done um so yeah I hope you enjoy the vlog and I will catch up with you in a bit for an update just talk to you a little bit about my intentions for the year I suppose like my fun intentions I'm not really setting any serious goals this year because I just want to have like a year when nothing major in my life happens just want to flow for a year um but I do want some fun in my life so the word that I'm gonna set for this year I've never set the word before um but I'm gonna set the word magic um because even though it's really cheesy um it's just something i really sort of tried to live by in 2023 um i really enjoyed seeing the magic in just really small things um like some of my highlights were going to Abermore on a solo trip and the snow there was just like the most magical thing I've ever seen um it was just so beautiful like the kind that just like really takes your breath away and that was like probably like it was at least like in the top three sort of highlights of my year um and that was just such a small thing like seeing the snow um so yeah I'd like to live my life in a similar way to how I did in 2023 just by really appreciating the small moments and finding sort of magic in really like everyday things or not necessarily just everyday but just really small 
thing that would quite often be taken for granted I suppose so so I've chosen magic as my word to sort of live by um, because I'm trying as well to just not buy as much and not bring so much stuff into my life and just focus more on what I have and finding magic in ways that don't involve me sort of spending any money um and yeah just really learning to appreciate sort of what I have and finding the magic in that so that's my word for the year um I have a few things that I would like to do in terms of my health um I'd like to start going to yoga regularly I was doing yoga as a regular practice over the summer and I just found it really beneficial um but I'd like to join a class particularly just because I find it easier to motivate myself to go to a class if I've booked and paid for a class um I will find that much easier to do than sort of getting the motivation to just like sit and do it in my house um also when I'm at home I often have my son and my husband around and we haven't got a terribly big house and it's just it's just a lot easier to be out the house so I've booked myself my first yoga class of 2023 not until the 11th of January which is a Thursday um but I'm away for the first week of January and then I thought I'm just gonna like get myself back into work before I go launching myself into doing like yoga at 7am and having to get the 6am train to work so um yeah I've booked that for Thursday the 11th and I'm really excited um, I've never been to that particular yoga studio before and they also do aerial yoga on a Wednesday night so I think if I find that I like the studio and sort of gel with the teachers I'll book myself in to try that hopefully. Um, I'd like to start cycling, I worked as a cycle to work scheme, it's about eight miles to work um, which is a long cycle um, but we have shower facilities in work um, and I live right next to a cycle path that will take me all the way into Edinburgh so I don't have to go along any roads or anything um, and it's just something I'd really like to do. I wanted to start cycling last year but I didn't manage to prioritise that. There were other things I wanted to do more but I would like to yeah, get into cycling um, and just try and get a bit more exercise into my life. I'm not the kind of person that can go to the gym um, because of my health conditions I have. I can't do sort of bursts of, of exercise, like a workout necessarily. I have to take it slow, which is why yoga works for me. Um, I could walk like miles and miles. Um, I regularly walk maybe like 15 miles. Um, I'll be completely wiped out the next day, but I can do that um, in the moment and I don't feel too exhausted by doing it um so yeah I think something like cycling will really help with that and just I love being outdoors and in nature and particularly over the summer it'll be nice to have some more time to enjoy that in the morning rather than just walking there five minutes to the train station and then getting on the train and then walking the five minutes to work like just really making some time for myself to do something I enjoy before work and yeah hoping to get into cycling um I'm also wanting to sort my health out um I have like a chronic illness and I'm not in control over that a lot of the time so I'm not pressuring myself too much um but I do need to start taking my vitamins um particularly b12 and um vitamin d as well um I've been really bad at taking those so I want to get back into that I say that while I'm drinking like a bottle of Pepsi um, which is terrible for my health um, and also I really need to stop drinking caffeine um, I stopped again over the summer I wasn't drinking caffeine at all and I felt so much better in myself but then I think it was when I went yeah, I went on holiday to the Seychelles and I was drinking like cappuccinos at breakfast and having alcohol and yeah I just ended up going back to drinking caffeinated coffee and it, it tastes a lot better I can't lie um, but once I get used to decaf then I'm quite happy with it and I just feel like my health is so much better when I'm not drinking caffeine um, so yeah they're the only health goals I have um, just like small things I can do to 
improve on my health when I don't really have a huge amount of control over my health, if that makes sense. Um, so they're my health goals. Um, in terms of like my hobbies, I want to get back into learning Welsh. I am Welsh and I speak a passable amount of Welsh. Um, I learned in school, um, but I'd like to just get back into learning that and just be able to have sort of more advanced conversations in Welsh. Um, my Welsh heritage is something I feel very um, passionately about now I'm older and I can sort of like appreciate sort of how special it is to have that language when it was taken away from um, sort of my ancestors, like my grandparents didn't speak Welsh at home because it was something that wasn't tolerated in school. And my granddad telling me that um, people in his class would get caned if they spoke Welsh. And um, yeah, it's just nice to be able to honour my Welsh heritage. And I just like to continue um, learning about it and learning the language. And, you know, I have this opportunity to speak a beautiful language um, with a lot of history and a lot of sadness behind it and um, I always get really emotional when I think about um, my ancestors not having that opportunity to speak their own language and they're sort of being forced into learning English and adopting sort of like English culture and um, yeah, I just want to sort of reclaim a little bit of that for myself, um, which is very important to me. So continue learning Welsh is um, on my list and I've kind of fallen out of that. I think sort of towards the end of the year, you just kind of naturally fall out of your habits and hobbies with like, everything's kind of like up in the air with Christmas. I think for me especially, I went on holiday and that, and I also started a new job around the same time as going on holiday and it just really like threw out a lot of my... Um, habits and things I enjoyed doing so I think the new year is a good time to pick that up again. Um, I would like to continue something that I, I kind of started over Christmas. Um, I made myself an advent calendar and it looked a lot like this. This is my TBR prompt jar which is featuring in another video but it's the exact same concept so I had like um, 24 different prompts in here and each had like things like paint or like things I could do um, as a hobby. I had make mulled wine on there. I had um, a cozy reading night. Um, and the idea was that I would pull one prompt each day and do that thing. Um, but it was just too much, I think, to do something every day. Um, I just didn't have the time um, to do all that. So I think I'm gonna reintroduce that for the whole year. Um, and rather than pull one thing every day, just be like, okay, I've got a little bit of free time tonight. Um, instead of sitting and watching TV, like I usually do, how can I make this night a little bit more special? Um, pull something out and just give me time to enjoy like the other hobbies that I have in my life that aren't reading and just watching TV. And I think by doing it just when I feel like it, um, I'll enjoy it a lot more than doing it because it's just like, oh, I like pulled like go for a long walk out of the advent calendar this morning so now I've got to go for a long walk and I didn't feel like doing it um so yeah there's that um and what else do I have on here oh yeah um knitting I'd like to start knitting I watched Hannah May's video where she was knitting a load of like hats and bonnets for her friends and I'm just like I want to do that that looks amazing um and I'm not sort of the most crafty person and um, my mum tried to teach me to knit when I was younger but my mum is left-handed and she was just getting really frustrated I'm right-handed and like it just wasn't working um and she was getting really frustrated and I was getting really frustrated and we were just like you know what maybe knitting's not for me um but I'd really like to learn and just be able to make my own I love knitwear um and I'd love to get to the point where I can make my own jumpers and like I said just making hats for friends like what a lovely thing to do um so I really want to do that um I've got coffee out on here basically we've had a coffee machine for 
years now and we just like never really used it um because it's a bit of a pain to like get it out and fill the tank up and everything and um I started using it over Christmas and now I'm just obsessed with it and I really want to just be able to do coffee art with the milk will I do that probably not but that's something that I just want to keep in mind just like yeah that would be fun to do and if I ever find myself bored with nothing else to do that's something I can look back on and think yeah I'm gonna attempt that and my final one is something that I will achieve um it's just like to go on a birthday trip which I do every year um I go somewhere by myself um the last two years it's been Scotland um and I'm going to continue that I want to go somewhere in Scotland I think I'm going to go back to um two years ago I went to Loch Lomond um and I wanted to climb Conic Hill the last two years I think it's been closed when I wanted to go um maybe the first year I just couldn't be bothered I'm not sure it was definitely closed last year so I couldn't go that's why I went to Aviemore um but yeah I would like to do that um so I'm gonna have a look for like just a really basic cabin to stay in I think and just spend a few days just enjoying my own company walking last year I took my paints with me and did some watercolour of like the scenery um that I was surrounded by and it was just such a, a magical way to spend a few days of my life so um I think I have vlogs for both of the, the birthday trips I've um been on since I've been on YouTube um I'll link those down below and yeah that's basically my my only goals um that I have they're not like big crazy goals like I don't know like milestones to achieve in my career or my personal life things like that it's just here are some fun things that I want to do over the next year and some serious things as well like the vitamin thing like I really need to do that that should be top of my list um but mostly just fun things to help me live my life by that word magic and just really find and appreciate the magic of everyday life. it's okay for it to not be perfect um I have just finished painting a lovely winter landscape in my journal it's like the first page other than the title um and I was just like at first oh no I wish I hadn't started this in my journal it looks terrible it looks nothing like the tutorial that I used blah, blah, blah. And it's like yeah it doesn't look like the tutorial that you used because the tutorial you used was from a professional watercolor artist who's been doing it for years and years and you have done watercolor like five or six times in your life so um yeah I'm just trying to be like proud of it I think it turned out nicely um like obviously it's not 
perfect and it doesn't matter I had such a fun like it took me about 20 minutes I think and it was just a really nice peaceful calming activity and I'm just trying to tell myself that I can still put things in my journal if they're not perfect um I've had this journal for months now and have been too scared to use it so um yeah it's nice that I finally taken the plunge and it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be and even if it was it's just like well that's just what I painted and it's fine for it to be a bit shit so take that as a reminder because when I see people do these lovely journal spreads I just get the fear of ever using mine because I know mine won't be as like technically good and it doesn't matter because it looks cute and it's something that I created and I think there's something really special about that. This is my hello so this vlog is gonna go up a lot later than I planned because I've been really unwell um I won't go into it but it was pretty horrendous and I now have a sinus infection starting so looking a bit crusty feeling a bit crusty but I've finished both of the books that I was planning to finish in this vlog um it's, it's taken me some time but uh I just thought I will finish this update anyway um so the first book I finished I actually finished um either on New Year's Eve or the day before um but I that is Beyond the Wall by Katja Hoyer. Um, I actually really enjoyed this um, and I think it's a really strong piece of non-fiction on the German Democratic Republic. Um, it's quite similar in vibes I think to Free by Leah Thurpey, um, which is one of my favourite books from 2022 I think it was. Um, I really love that book and its discussions of what freedom means within a post-communist Eastern Europe context um, and this sort of like springboards off some of those ideas and um, particularly within the epilogue um, I thought the epilogue was really really strong overall um, my favourite part of the book to read by far um, and yeah there was a, a passage that I highlighted in this um, that sort of sums up like the whole book quite well I think um and that is so we're, we're talking about like post reunification and reading about the reunification and seeing like images of it always gives me goosebumps and just makes you want to cry um I think it's just such a a powerful image and so moving and emotional even though I don't necessarily agree that um the reunification was um positive sort of entirely I mean like there are obviously like aspects of it that were that were very positive and aspects that are maybe not so so positive but yeah just seeing the images of it and reading about it always makes me just feel like I want to cry I think it's so powerful like I said um but this particular passage um talks about sort of the events of the 3rd of October when um, the Berlin Wall was breached um, by East German citizens and said it's tempting to see the 3rd of October 1990 as the restoration of Germany's status quo but this interpretation equates West German with normal. Many assumed that it was just a question of time until former GDR citizens would shed the habits imposed on them by an alien socialist system and become fellow Germans once more. Yet East Germans have not been asked to return to something that they were once part of, but to blend into a West German state that had evolved without them after the Second World War. While there are common cultural, linguistic and social roots, what had grown from them since 1949 had diverged significantly in East and West. It's telling that many East Germans tend not to use the word reunification, but instead speak of Wende or Wendezeit, an era of transformation. While West German lives con continued as before, for East Germans the 3rd of October 1990 triggered a wave of change whose force, direction and pace were uncontrollable and I just think that's a, a really good point and something that I'm really interested in myself so like part of my dissertation, I feel like I mention this all the time, I'm just like obsessed with um, the GDR, I really love reading about it um, and studying it but um, part of my dissertation was um, looking at East German 
identity sort of post reunification um and sort of looking at this idea of reunification as bringing together two parts that were once separate but Germany had never existed as it exists now prior to the reunification and sort of a lot of um older East Germans were actually born sort of like outside the the boundaries of what is now considered Germany so they were born in like modern day Poland and yeah I just think it's really fascinating to um to read about that and to consider and study it and yeah just this book was really really good um would I recommend it to everyone? Probably not. I think if you have sort of a vague interest in like socialism and communism um, of the sort of mid to late 20th century within Europe, I think you would really like this and I think it's a very worthwhile read. Um, if that's not something that interests you, you're probably not going to be interested by this book. Um, but I really liked it and I gave it four stars overall. I'm really glad that I read it. Then a book I took with me into the new year is Reach for the Stars by Michael Cragg. This was so much fun, such a romp um, through the nostalgia of, of pop music sort of when I was growing up. Um, it, it's not entirely just for fun, it raises a lot of um, really important topics like um, the way, you know, race and um, sexuality and, and gender and class were treated within um, pop music particularly within the late 90s and early 2000s um, and just how that was reflective of society as a whole. Um, there was a particular part I was reading um, about there's a um, show called Pop Stars um, when I was a teenager and it was like a tv show following um, two rival pop groups who were um, sort of you're following their like audition process and like the process of them becoming this band and one particular judge Nigel Lithgow um had sort of like this persona as like a horrible person and I mean I think he is a horrible person from what I know about him um but I remember him saying to one of the contestants he was just like oh come on Kim it's almost Christmas and the goose is still fat and that's referenced in the book and I was just like I remember that happening um and it was just such a wild time to grow up and this book really reminded me of just how wild it was in terms of like um by anybody who was perceived as like anything other than like very um reserved and um straight and uh very slim and beautiful and just how like some things have changed since then some things haven't but yeah it was a really wild time to grow up um particular highlights of the book for me were the passage on the boy band blue um I was absolutely cackling through most of that um I think the story about blue meeting Donatella Versace I will not spoil that for you but it is a gem and I was just like howling laughing at that um remembering that they sampled um hypnotized by Biggie in one of their songs um I'd completely forgotten that that existed and again hilarity and Jude I thought it was brilliant I went to listen to it and was just like I cannot believe they did that but they did um and yeah just so so many great moments um for nostalgia I think again if you're like not sort of connected to British pop music um from this particular period you're not gonna enjoy the book because I think you have to have some sort of knowledge of what the culture was like at the time and um have some sort of like investment in um the music and just the, the time period um but yeah it was such a nostalgia trip raised a lot of important themes I really liked the way it was edited um very compelling and I just wanted to keep reading it and yeah I gave this one four stars too um just a very different four stars to beyond the wall but I think this is the most fun I've had with a book in a while and yeah I'd read like anything else that um, Michael Craig writes on the topic because I think he does a really good job of um, just like dealing with it with humour but also presenting sort of the pop stars as, as people um, in the interviews um, they're 
sort of treated with a lot of um compassion and, and dignity and it's just like a world away from sort of like the interviews that I grew up reading with these particular pop stars so yeah highly recommend that and that is going to be the end of the vlog um I have nothing else to update you on I don't think um like I said we're well into the new year now um I hope my sinus infection clears up quickly so I can get back to reading and filming but uh yeah thanks very much for watching I hope you had a lovely new year celebration and that your new year is going a bit better than mine is um but yeah see you soon bye